Hey guys, welcome back to the 415. It's your girls, Miss B and Kita. If you are first coming to us today, we are two best friends up here bringing our personal phone conversations to life. So we talk mess. We speak knowledge. We do hot topics. We do it all, right, Kita? We do it all. Brand new socks and drawers. Hey. 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 Oh, yeah, we singing. And we quoting movies. I mean, come on. If you want to laugh, listen to us. You want to just have some deep convos, listen to us. So, yeah, welcome. Welcome to the 415 Podcast. Again, hosts are Miss B, myself, and Kita. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I hope y'all are having, I hope you like, in the words of my son, hope you're having a beautiful day. How awesome it is <laughs> that it's a beautiful day. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Cam. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh man. So uh today is Sunday when we're recording and it is the lost hour day. Daylight savings time. Can I tell you how flustered I've been today? <laughs> how you been today? Today is just lost in, in, in uh lost in time. How are we gonna say that? Yeah. <laughs> Everything got jacked up today. Everything. I mean, goodness. I, I was late to church. I mean, everybody was late to church. I was so late that I had a VIP uh, parking space. Can you believe it? I mean, I was like, this never happens. I literally got out the car and walked right into the church. I said, won't he do it? Mm. Yes, he will. Late, but got a VIP. Right. I see. I see you. Uh-huh. So, hey, when you listen to it, it's going to be on Wednesday. So, happy Wednesday. But, uh, what we talk about on last week? Episode, was that 47? Yes, 47. Episode 47. Oh, I remember that one. It's a love triangle. Oh, yeah. That that was the, yeah, the Jordan Woods situation. Falling from multiple guys. Mm. <laughs> is that, is it possible? It's possible, <laughs> child. Everything's possible these days. <laughs> Tell you that. <laughs> I know. But this week we are on episode forty eight. Episode forty eight. That is crazy. Yeah, we almost at the big we almost over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Over the hill. <laughs> so I don't know what we have for a title. I guess I can just say as a people. Dot dot dot. Just call it the people. The people. Mm-hmm. The people. Episode forty eight. The people. What people? You gotta listen. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Don't just be listening to the snippet. That ain't the whole podcast episode. You know, I don't know what it is. We had to change our post so that it said it's a snippet. Cause I feel like people are like, ooh, that was a good episode. Well, that was only seconds of it. What do you mean? There's a whole forty minutes left. Right. <laughs> like, what are you doing? So just know. Instagram only give you sixty seconds of post. <laughs> I never heard of a podcast that's only 60 seconds long. I mean, you could get a lot out in 60 seconds, but, I mean, you want the meat, too, don't you? I mean... Don't nobody want no cheese sandwich? Look, well, I mean... Matter of pe- fact, some pe- people do like cheese sandwich. People be getting those Instagram videos, and you can get a whole lot in 60 seconds with those videos, so... <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. I mean, when you think back to, like, um, what was that other one called? Vine? It was only six seconds. I thought it was 15 seconds. Uh-uh, girl. It was short. It was six. Do it for the dime. I ain't going to do it for the vine. I ain't going to do it. Yep, it was six seconds. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess I guess you're right. It, it was short. So when Instagram came with their whole 60 seconds, we was like, oh, okay. You get a whole 60. And now, and now I just And it's really not 60, but it's, you know, 59. But whatever. Who's counting? Right. And I just noticed the other day I was looking at, I want to say, Pat Pat Lucky Pat D Lucky video and when it went over 60 seconds it said watch more on IGTV I said oh oh yeah mhm i think a lot of people who have their accounts set up a certain way mhm yeah cuz i saw Tony Gaskins shout out to Tony Gaskins he's pretty dope uh, relationship coach life coach whatever um his are like that mhm yeah but um yeah, we the 415. We we them girls, Miss B and Kia. 
Right, right. And for so, those who don't know what the 415 stand for, you know, is a collaboration collective of our birthdays, April 1st, April 15th. Yeah, no, it is not the area code of San Francisco. But we do okay? appreciate you listening, though. <laughs> you Thank know, you. shout out to San Francisco. <laughs> I know they don't like San Fran or if it's uh, no, they, they, you got to say San Francisco. I did hear they do not like SF or San. Yeah. So San Francisco. Hey, guys. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, George Foreman. Yes. His daughter passed away, um, the past week. I, I, I don't know if it was Friday or Saturday. Um, she was 42. I think she left behind two kids and a, and a husband. I think. And three grandchildren. I was like, oh, 42 and a grandma. Mm hmm. And her name is, uh, Frida. Frida Foreman. She actually was following her dad's footsteps. She was a boxer as well. Yeah, Crazy. but he didn't want her to box. I bet you he didn't. I wonder if her and uh, Layla was cool. Layla Ali. Who knows? You know, they all around that mm-hmm. era, so. Right. Yeah. But yeah, someone found her um, in her home, I guess, unresponsive. It was a relative. But nobody knows what it is. They're not saying it's... um Foul play. No foul yeah. play. Right. So I guess as that story unfolds, deets will follow. Right, right. But yeah, Mr. Uh, Jesse Smollett now 16 felony counts Mm -hmm. by the grand jury. So uh, that's serious, isn't it? Yeah. We just got to go to court and see what happens. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Got to be more careful. Wow. It's crazy. That is crazy. Like, how do you feel, you know, now? Right. If this is, if it's true. Right. You never it's thought crazy. it was going to get to that point. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is something else. Woo. Well. People got to be careful these days. Got to be more careful. For real. For real, for real. Yeah. But, um... Who else, Keita? R. Kelly go back to jail <laughs> for child support. <laughs> but, his, but then he paid and he got out. Somebody paid the oh, 100, somebody. Somebody huh. paid the hundred and sixty thousand dollar unpaid child support. Uh-huh. And, he got uh, one good person in there. And um, he was out. So, and people were like, wow. what, <laughs> people were like, who will pay his child support? A eh? right, you never know. You never know. Crazy. Mm-mm-mm. Michael Jackson. Oh Lord. I'm like, what in the world is wrong? Like, I don't understand. Like, why are y'all? This man, the FBI said they found no evidence of him doing anything to children, and I really feel like this has something to do with them trying to get more money from his estate. Like, are you trying to get money from his estate? Because y'all, hmm. y'all couldn't touch it. Why right. are y'all bothering this man? He can't defend himself. That is something else. And then, you know, people mad at Oprah because, like, you're just going to, um, you know, side. I guess side with them. I I, I don't, I, I'm not sure what she's doing, what her motive is, but that's Oprah, so. Hmm. What can you do? I don't know, but the interviews he had, he just was off the deep end. How fast social media is when they be coming up with them memes and them gifts. Oh, my goodness. They already had some Uno card looking thing. And you know what? I It was funny because um, Jesse Smollett, attorney, he uh, somebody had posted up some, somebody posted something on Instagram and it said that his attorney said, you know, I, I believe that was his attorney said that Je- Jesse is going through modern modern day lynching. Mm-hmm. And I had to when, first when I looked at it, I was like, oh, whatever. And then I had to think about it, and I was like, in today's world with social media, it is like a modern day lynching. People will get a little bit of information about you, and automatically give you crucifixion. They're mm-hmm. ready to just hang you out there to dry, like whatever. Because they hmm. just got a little piece of information. Just like the whole thing with um, Jordan Woods. 
Mm-hmm. Soon as Chloe, Chloe, oh, somebody told and said, oh yeah, uh, Jordan was trying to mess with Trist- Tristan or whatever his name is. They automatically was ready to like hang this girl, write her off. Hmm. I'm telling you, negative news travels so much faster. Okay, but it's so crazy. It, it's it's crazy because then you have to look at it like, dang, you know, our people went, what our people went through this back in the day. Emmett Till, he ain't do nothing. Hmm. But because the white woman said, oh, he whistled at me, hmm. what they do? It's crazy. It is crazy. It's crazy. But to go back to Jesse, somebody posted this on Twitter talking about MAGA actually means my ass got arrested. <sighs> Lord. What, I guess that's what that's going to mean for Trump, too. Okay. <laughs> Girl, I don't know. Y'all just got time on y'all hands to be trying to make that term something positive. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, it's ugh. yeah. I don't know. But what else happened? Oh, the Ethiopian Ethiopian uh, flight that crashed mm-hmm. with 157 people on there. Of that 157, eight Americans. Yes. Yes. Condolences to all those that For were real. affected by that plane, that plane crash. Oh my god, it's sad, and it's like you don't think about it when you get on these planes. That oh my gosh, I'm not gonna make it. You know what I'm saying? You just get on it thinking you're just gonna get to your destination. But it's just like driving cars. Like there's so many accidents when you're in a car. Motorcycles, big trucks. Should you I know? tell you something? Every time I get in a plane, I think about it. Like mm. what? What would be your reaction? If something would like I always in my head I have this this whole thing of like what what would you do right now if this plane crashed and you are eight thousand well thirty some thousand feet up in the air? Hmm. I'm gonna I have mean, to pass the hell out. Huh? I said I'm I'm gonna just pass pass out. I don't want I don't want to feel nothing. <laughs> It's like, I mean, that's why I, when you think about it, when you get on these flights, the first thing people do is what? Turn on their music and zone out. Nobody's paying attention to those safety precautions. So when it's time, when, not when it's time, but when stuff goes down, mm-hmm. you know, nobody knows what to do. And that's why I think a lot of people, yeah, I don't know. Like, like what can you do? Like. Yeah, you can't get out. You can't get out of the plane. The more you panic is the worse it gets. Right. I think. All the energy being used. Huh? All the energy that you're using because you're going crazy. Right. And my whole, my thing is like when they say, oh, put your, fasten your seatbelt. Like if the plane is going down, I'm taking my seatbelt off because if, especially if you go over water or something like that, I'm taking it I off. I mean, think about it. If you're going down and you don't have a seatbelt on, you can be flying all across the hole. You can break. I mean, I get that. Every per- I get that. But what if you get, what if you're in the water? I mean, what if you flying over water, the plane goes down? Well, you'll know when you hit the water and you just unbuckle it. Right, but what if something gets stuck and it's stuck on your seatbelt, debris, and you can't get out? No, I'm talking about as soon as you see it go nosedive and you get that big crash, click, boom. Yeah. You know, but I get it. In that moment, you're not like, really you thinking. Never, you you're just that's like, what I'm saying. You, you're not thinking yeah. like, you but ain't thinking like, about all that. That's why I was You think like, about like. Like a car, you have passengers, you know, the driver, the passenger, and then you have the folks in the back seat. Mm-hmm. The one in the middle seat who doesn't wear the seatbelt, where do they end up? Oh, through the, through the windshield. Always. No matter what impact, stop short, somebody did something, hit you on the side, they fly. Mm-hmm. So it's just like that seatbelt is, yes, a lifesaver. And sometimes it does take a life because I remember my cousin got into an accident, car flip, flip, flip. She didn't have a seatbelt on. And she was fine. Like, obviously, she got, you know, bumps and bruises and all that stuff. But she, right. they said if she, and she was pregnant. So they said um, if she would have had the seatbelt on, it would have been a whole different story. Mm-hmm. Either the baby would have died because of, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I guess it depends. I don't know. Because sometimes, obviously, the seatbelts get jammed. You right. know that time when you stop short and the seatbelt just holds you? Mm-hmm. That's when Sometimes they choke it the life out of you. You'd be like, oh, yeah. God, wait, wait. Right. So some people do like end up with injuries from the seatbelt. Mm-hmm. So I guess it depends. I don't know. See, the ones on a plane aren't the shoulder one the in lap. the lap. It's just the lap. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Because I'm thinking like you, you never know what's going to happen with the impact. I mean, I mean, obviously we don't know because we're not in a situation. We've never been in a situation. I don't want to be in that situation. But I'm saying like. You're you're in this 
you know, this huge metal um, object, the pressure of water or whatever, and the way it could bend that metal. So you never know what you're going to be. You know what I'm saying? I'm just. I mean, I'm pretty sure a seatbelt has sliced people before because of impact. Right. With it being so tight that it just. So, yeah. It's just, I remember I was on a flight. I don't even know where I was going. It was from Georgia to New York or I don't know. It was recent, too. Mm-hmm. When you're coming back, we had so much turbulence to the point where I thought the, the plane just fell. Because it was, it was hard turbulence. That's like the hardest I've ever felt. And I was right. just like, you know me, I already prayed before I got on a plane. I prayed when we went in the air. I prayed when we got to the altitude we needed to get to. And when that turbulence came, I was real chill. Everybody else was screaming. I was chill. That's crazy, girl. I was chill. You know, normally I think I would have been like, ah! but I was like, no, mm-mm. I'm like, you, look, if God called this for you right here, hey, hey. But that's sad. All of those people. I'm not sure. Were they able to locate the the plane? Um. Yes, but there were no survivors. Okay, so they know. Okay, because the whole Malaysia airline thing, that's still crazy to me. Right. That they were still trying to search for the debris from the plane. Right. And I don't know if you watched that show Manifest on NBC. Yeah, as soon as I seen Manifest come out, I figured it was about that. It's funny, I didn't even put two and two together, but I'm like, now that I think about it, with the fact that it just disappeared, and I'm looking at the show Manifest, which is actually really good, by the way. Right. Um, I mean, you can't call me, text me, no, I'd be so glued to that, it'd be so good. So I'm like, do you really think that can happen? Like, you can literally be frozen in time. Yeah, I think... Like, is that possible? Because I still have to, I still have to, I still have to catch up with the episodes, Mm. Um, but I like, like, I like the show because it's yeah. like, you kind of, all the people that was on the plane are yep. all connected right. by 828, by God, probably. Girl. I don't know what happened, whatever, whatever turbulence they went through, whatever. It's like a time what, warp. Whatever that happened, you know. It's kind of like when you watch like them super sci-fi type movies and you end up going into some, like E.T., some kind of extraterrestrial or whatever. Right, right. You know, like, is it real? And I don't think anybody can say yes or no, because maybe it is. Oh, okay. Okay, here go Kita Hadito. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> y'all got to know, uh, y'all new listeners, uh, when she go, okay. Here, here come okay, her, um... okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Look, she is real hype right now. Okay, so, for one, last night I went to go see Captain Marvel, right? (laughs) (sighs) Anybody that know me know that I'm kind of like a a slick, fake nerd, blurred, if you want to call me. Like, I watch all of Marvel, DC. I can't wait till X-Men come out because I'm like, yes, it's it's a wrap. Avengers coming out. Oh, oh, yes, I got to talk to somebody today. We got to unpack this movie that, yes. Hmm. So, but I always look at Marvel and DC movies. They're always Hmm. dropping gems. Mad Mm -hmm. gems, yo. Mad gems. And people be like, so, yeah, by the time we talk about this, it'll be Wednesday. Okay. So, (laughs) (laughs) because I ain't wanted to be no spoiler alert, you know what I'm saying? So... They're talking, they're on the planet Cree, planet Cree. And on the planet Cree, they're like these blue aliens, blue people, whatever, right? Um, Now, mind you, like I said, I'm a fake nerd. I just got into Marvel like 10 years ago, so, you know, whatever. So, the blue people, they're on planet Cree. The pink people, the whites, they're also on planet Cree. So, I had to do a little Wikipedia research last night. So they were saying how the blue people, the blue alien, the blue people were like this super strength, um, intelligent. They, um, their main, um, way of breathing was, was nitrogen and all this other stuff. Then they were saying how the pink people came on, came on a planet, um, became like the cousins of the blue people. I'm not reading this thing. I'm just trying to go off memory. Okay. (laughs) 
they also was saying how because I don't know nothing about this stuff. Right. They were also saying how the pink people try to outnumber. They no, the pink people outnumber the blue people, but they put the pink people, Caucasians, the whites, in like concentration camps, slavery camps, or whatever. So they exiled them. Um, what else happened? Something, whatever. Anyway, so Something, oh, whatever, and it was one. also it was also against. It was against law for any of the blue people to cohabitate, not cohabitate, but have, I guess, have sex or whatever with the pink people. That that hmm. that was, they, you can't do that because they was purebred. The blue people were purebred people and the whites were whatever, cousins, whatever, pink, whatever. So I started thinking about this and I was like, this show do sound like show, sound like something that was in the Bible. Because I could have sworn that's what the Nephilims were told to do too. The Nephilims were told they were not supposed to come to earth and they were not supposed to have sex with the humans. They were so, and then they, they did what they did and made hybrid, made hybrid people. I'm like, yo. Then I was like, that sounds like some black, some black people stuff. Mm-mm-mm. I'm done. Use a whole thing. Yo, I'm for real, yo. I'm gonna tell you something. When it comes to like Marvel, when it comes to Marvel and uh like universe spirituality type stuff, I I I really be thinking about this stuff for real, for real. Like yeah. I'll go into a, a whole day and I'll my my thinking to be a, be consumed with that. Like seriously. Like no stop. You you see where she went with it? Like I was getting I was getting excited last night after the movie. I was like, yo, did you hear what he said? He said that we was all over the earth. Da, 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 da. Girl, I was going deep. I was <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I can't wait till Avengers come out though. All right. Ready to see if my theory is right. <clears throat> I guess we can kind of bring it back. Um condolences to all the people, families affected by that Ethiopian plane crash. It's crazy. But we had a question. What do you think or what are the things that you feel we as a people, black people, do that tends to hold us back from success, from greatness, from anything good? Like, what do you think are those things that set us back? Hmm. It's pretty um, deep. Is it fear on two sides? Fear of being great and fear of not being great, failing. Um, is it? I'll I'll say fear, and I'll also say sometimes fear. Which way though? Um, fear of failing because I think we feel like we have when we do something, it's supposed to be successful at that at that moment. Mm-hmm. Also. I, f- I feel like sometimes we get in our own way. we we'll talk ourselves out of <laughs> doing something. Right off the rip without even trying or coming up with the plan. Right. And sometimes we just have to go with it because you never know where it's going to go. Okay. Um, what about this one? Is it generational? Um, like my mom didn't go to college. My dad didn't go to college. I'm not going to go to college. I don't want to say college I don't, I don't, I don't want to say that has anything to do with it because a lot of people haven't gone to college and are very successful. No, I'm not saying that college is successful. I'm using it as an example because my mom didn't go to college, my dad didn't go to college, then I probably can't get to college. Oh no, that's just that's just that's that's a gener yeah that's a generational thing because if anything, your parents you fight, should be right? your parents should be pushing you because they didn't do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not, and that's another thing. Sometimes family can be um, a big, a big part, a big part of why we aren't successful. Because mm-hmm. if if there's if they're always saying, um, "Oh, you ain't gonna, you ain't, you ain't gonna do, you ain't gonna do nothing. What you gonna do? Ain't nobody mm-hmm. gonna get nothing from you." And why you think they say that? Because that's a reflection of them, because hmm. they failed. And what they wanted to do in life. So they figured, well, because I failed, there ain't no way you can do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't. And excel. All right. Hmm. Which is sad. Very. Because 
it is it's very sad because I said even though I I, I went to I mean I took college classes I, school ain't school, school not for me. Now, mind you, like I said before, I love learning about things. I love educating myself on stuff. School's just not for me. I can't stand it. But my son, I'm going to make sure that I, I'll tell him, look, you got to get this done. You know, I'm going to let you, I'm going to allow him to, to, to go on his own path. I'm not going to say, oh, you need to do this or, oh, you can't do that. No, I'm not doing that. You You mean like all the way through high school graduation? Right. And then after that, he can... Make if he decides he want to go to college, he want to go to college. If not, not saying that because he he could be he could be gathering up life skills as he go as he's going through school. Mm-hmm. Hell, he could be he could be an entrepreneur in middle school. I don't know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So he has to go on his own path. I can't I can't force him to go on the path that I want him to go on. I think it's a different time now. Because of how much more people are becoming entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. So college is now, one, way more expensive, mm-hmm. right? Because not that many are going. Right. So they're going to try and make it harder for the little folks that, the little amount of people who are trying to go, right? Mm-hmm. Because everybody has been like, you know what? I don't need that. I don't, I don't need a degree to do this. Mm-hmm. I can make it go the way I want. If I have to get a license and whatever, I can do that. Because mm-hmm. you have a lot of people now wanting to go real estate. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people have moved to the real estate path. And hey, it works. Right. But for me, the reason I went to school is because of where I grew up. And I didn't want to be a product of that environment. Mm-hmm. So I was like, my way out of here, my ticket out of here is going to school. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be on my own because I had to grow up fast. At 13, I was raising, you know, people. I was raising my brother. I was not the typical teenager that I should have been. Mm-hmm. I should have been out there partying and doing whatever, but I wasn't. Right. I was too busy working. I was working at 13. So, yeah, that was my ticket out. I don't say, like, you have to go to college. Right. You know, I, at one point I thought that. I was like, if you didn't go to college, you're not successful. You're not smart. But then I had to change my thinking after seeing, you know, how a lot of people have went the other route, starting businesses and actually being successful. Mm -hmm. Living in in Atlanta, Georgia has definitely changed my perspective on a lot of things because there are more entrepreneurs in Georgia Mm -hmm. alone than I've seen in New York, New York City, obviously, because it's way more cheaper to live down there Mm -hmm. than it is here. So I feel like, you know, a lot more people are able to start businesses in the South because they have, you know, the means to do so as far as like financials. You don't have to come up with way high or a lot of, you know, right. money to start. Whereas here, who trying to trying to get a space? Let me tell you something. All you need is a house in Georgia. You get your little basement together and that's your <laughs> little, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 can't, you can't get no house up here. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. And if you do get a house, hmm, goodbye vacation. <laughs> right. Goodbye. So, yeah, I had to change my perspective when I lived there, you know. So, yeah, school isn't for everybody. I get it. But, obviously, to get more money, I feel like that is a good avenue. To get into certain, like, especially if you're trying to stay in the corporate world. You know, for the people who are entrepreneurs, yeah, it'll probably take a little bit longer to get to the amount of money you want. But for the people who are trying to be in corporate world, the first thing they ask you is for the degree. So, yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's that's BS. Not saying that what you're saying is BS. I'm yeah, saying I get it. how corporate makes it seem like you have to have this big degree, PhD, da 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 mm-hmm. da da mm-hmm. or just get this money when it's bullshit. Because I've seen people who don't have a freaking diploma or freaking they college came in degree in the beginning. And, will, and will rise up. Why though? They're because already they in white. the company. Oh, and they're in the company already, right? They started as, I don't know, no. an administrative assistant? No. Mm. They will rise up over people who have bachelor's degrees, PhDs. I've seen it happen. So wait, wait, let me back up. You're saying these people who are coming in as VPs, let's just use one as a title, VP. You're saying no, they don't I, work I at the saying, company I'm not already. saying VP level. I'm going to just say entry. Let's just start at entry level. I've seen okay, so people. Who, these people come I, I, in. I've seen people at the same level I was at, right, come in who don't have the same education as their coworker, 
and go mm-hmm. above their coworker without mm-hmm. even having the same credentials as that person who has a bachelor or a PhD or whatever or, or whatever they got. And it so you're pissed, saying it's a double standard. It's a double that standard. They're hiring some people who don't have a college degree, right? Just a high school degree, a high school, a high school diploma, trait. a high school diploma. But I said high school degree. Yeah, high school yeah. diploma. You know what you I mean. You just got right? a high school diploma, but you keep you keep de- you keep denying this person who has the bachelor's, who has the PhD, different positions, but then. You claim, but you 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 put this person over over top of them. It make that shit pisses me off every time I seen it. Hmm. Like, start with the oh, you need this, you need that. You don't need that shit. It's all about who you know, what you know. I mean, it's all about who you know and what you know. Who asked you gonna kiss the most to get this goddamn job? Hmm. That's basically how it runs, and and, and it's, it's how I see it. Hmm. Yeah. Because it's it's crazy. I've I, man, I'm telling you, I've seen people who. And some people, they don't, you be looking at some people like, how do you even get this position? Because you have no, no right. clue on what you're doing. But mm-hmm. yet, you're you're asking your subordinates on how to do your job. Mm-hmm. What? How did you get here? Right. That's so why, the- but it's like, it's that saying that black people have, black people have to work the hardest, the longest to get what they want while other people just sit there and just relax. And well, when they don't get well, not what we want to get, an, just an inch, yeah, ahead just an inch or close to them, and then because we don't get everything right. And if you ever notice how a white, I, I hate, I hate, to, I hate to be, you know, do the, the do the the racial thing, but it is what it is. You ever see right. how a white person looks when a black person when they thought that they was gonna get that position, but the black person get it? Oh, they. Be, I mean, I was in uh, what women want, they, or what men want. They be red and hot like a mug. They be hot. I mean. Taraji P. Henson in that movie, What Men Want. Right, right, right. She thought she was going to get, right. And when she finally got it, you know, she had to work extra hard to, you know? Yeah. But just to go back, maybe that is part of why we as a people are held back because we done got X, you know, X amount of years in and still didn't get there. Mm -hmm. And we just give up. So maybe that's another part, us giving up. When we can't attain or setting, like I'll use me as an example, setting unrealistic goals sometimes. Yeah. But I like to dream big, right? I'm, you know, when people try to tell you you can't do something, you want to, you want to prove them wrong. But I don't know why we want to do that. Like I shouldn't have to prove anybody anything. I should just be doing this for myself. But at the same time, I remember when people told me fashion, what you trying to go to fashion? Why you want to go to FIT? You can't get an FIT. That's hard to get into a word. Watch me. Wrote the illest, killest essay for FIT, and I got accepted. Did I go? No. And I was pissed off. I was pissed off after I thought about it. You know, but it's just like, when I thought about money, I was like, FIT is not, it's really the fashion industry. I'm not going to get paid the big bucks unless I'm working for, you know, unless I hit that, that super one crazy position or you know mm-hmm. it's it's not an easy industry to be in it's cutthroat everybody's gonna knock each other down to get to the next thing so i'm like ah no so i kind of went left mm-hmm. instead of that but i found my um i was going through some papers when i was like cleaning up and i was like dang is that acceptance letter right. i shredded it though <laughs> i was like i don't want to look at this no more but again, so yeah, just to go back. So we said fear, fear of being successful, fear of failing. What about just fear alone? I'm just scared. Um, that could work on so many different levels. Mm-hmm. It could be personal. Yeah. If you're trying to, if you're trying to uh, be become an entrepreneur, running your try to run your own business, uh-huh. fear. Um, and I was having a conversation with somebody the other day by me going having a whole new spiritual journey is fear mm-hmm. because it's like it it fear um mm. cuz it's natural but it's like when do you mentally free yourself hmm. that's the thing you have to mentally free yourself so that you can so that you can um uh be be show your potential your highest potential of what you're trying to do if you don't you're gonna you're gonna always set yourself back hmm. 
yeah it's just one of those things and i just it's, it's i don't know it's just one of those things you just always think about every time somebody's up for promotion and there's like maybe one black person in there the black person doesn't get it and again like you say you don't want to bring race into it but we're black we're always gonna look at us mm-hmm. and why we can't get what the others get mm-hmm. you know but so. you know another thing that pisses me off too I mean, if we all going up to save me, me, you, and two other people, one of our, our closest friends, we all going up for a promotion. Am we I all be, black. Huh? Black. We all black. Yeah. Am I going to okay. be mad that you got the position over me? No. Uh, some people will, but That's me crazy. and you were not like that. Yeah. That, I don't know why she get it for Kashambi. I don't, dog, come on. You ain't got to be bashing nobody. But that's the other part. That's that's part of the other answer. What holds us back? Us. Yeah. Like you said, not wanting like if one wins, that should be like yo, we all just won. That was huge. Right. It's just like when Obama became president. That was a win for all of us. And when Spike Lee got the uh, Oscar. Ah uh, yes, yes. That was huge. When Black Panther's costume designer mm-hmm. and the set designer won. That's huge. And then you got Regina King. Mm-hmm. Look, I look at those as wins. Even though it's not us personally, right? it's still a win. But to go back to us four all being up for promotion and only one of us can get it, why would you be pissed? That should just give you more drive to go even harder for the next round of promotion. Exactly. You know, you got to look into like, okay, what did the other person do that maybe you was like, I don't want to do that. Right. You know, there's there's always a reason why you're not up for it. Mm-hmm. You just need to it's not your time. figure it out. Exactly. Like, you know, like you can't get everything when you want it. Mm. Better go on now. But yeah, like there's a lot of things that we do that hold us back. And it and it's sad. Right. Attitude is everything. Everything. The minute Ooh. you t- and the Bible tell you. So as a man thinks. Hmm. Don't ask so me. So was he? I don't know. So was he. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, you just quoted Nephilim. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 I, look. Let me tell you something. I remember the parts of that that was interesting to me. In- <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. I hate you right now. Oh, shoot. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so I'm just saying. The minute you tell yourself you can't do something, mm-hmm. you already removed yourself from the equation. Exactly. So you can't even get mad that so-and-so got it. Because you didn't even try to put one toe in. Right. You removed everything from that whole possibility. Mm-hmm. Potential. Because you told yourself already, I can't. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it wasn't you that said, I can't. Maybe it was your parents. Mm-hmm. Because it's a broken home. Your dad's not there because your mom can't stand your dad. Mm-hmm. And when your mom look at you, she see your dad. Oh, you so, gonna be nothing but just like you. Exactly. Like you're not a head ass daddy. Yes. Oh, black little snump. You know, it's like the stuff. It, it's words. Even that's another thing that holds us back. The words. How we talk to each other. Mm-hmm. You know, how to... Man, this thing could go on and on and on. My thing but, is, like, oh, man. Like, when it comes to, like, you know, I encourage... I try to encourage my friends as much as I can without being such of an asshole. So, 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 you know, who I am, you know what I mean? But I, but when it comes to my friends, whatever they want to do, I'd be like, all right, that's what you want to do. I got your back. I support it. No, but I, look, she know for me, don't tell me what I want to hear. Don't do that. Cause I, I don't no, like them kind of friends. Now, you know, I, now that's one thing I don't do with any of my friends. I don't tell them what they want to hear. Bitch, I'm your only friend, but go ahead. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't tell them anything that they want to hear because I don't. I they don't do me like that. Hmm. They be like, "Bitch, it, I, it, are you crazy?" Now I don't know why you sit. I don't know why you sit there and try to do this. Did it? Did it? Knowing you was gonna feel a certain type of way. I'd be like, I ain't she, trying to hear. Uh, I'd be like, she, I ain't trying she, to hear she this. She pulling shit. air, huh? <laughs> she pulling air when she talk. Right. Y'all know what that means? Like, Come on, black girls. I'd be like, I ain't trying to hear this shit right now. I'd be like, all right, whatever. Uh huh. Uh, yeah okay i'll tell you this in the last what three four years i've gotten promoted and got a new job which is also a promotion and in all those times i'm like yo kita y'all 
I got this promotion. And she be like falling off her chair because she's so hyped. When I got the next job, she's just like, yo, you know, then she got, then she got one. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you got to be there for your friends and be that support Mm -hmm. to help them keep fighting. If you don't have not one person in your corner that's pushing for you or pulling for you, like, come on, what kind of, oh my goodness. Right. Yeah. So I think as a takeaway from this episode, episode 48, the people get out of your own way. Stop talking yourself out of things and try it. Be like ludicrous. Get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> Move. Go hard. Get out the way. If you go to one of your friends and your friends are like, girl, I don't know why you're doing that. Cut that friend off. Especially if they don't have a, a valid reason as to why they're saying that. Mm-hmm. Cut them off. Now, if you got a friend that's like, girl, I don't think you should do this because X, Y, and Z. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're giving you something to think about. All right. Maybe X, Y, and Z was, well, you kind of started this one, but you didn't finish. You started this over here, but you didn't finish. Why are you going to this already? Mm -hmm. You need to be trying to focus on X, Y before you get to the Z. So, you know what I'm saying? But if you got a friend that just flat out says, girl, you ain't never going to make it. Okay, you don't need that person in your circle. I don't care if they dress real like nice and stuff. No, stop Mm -hmm. it. No. If they got all the money and they pay for everything, goodbye. You don't need that friend. Mm -hmm. Okay? No. You need people who are positive and want you to be positive and try to keep you on the right track. You want people that are are like happy when you win. Right. Those are the ones you want. What else you got? What you think? Change attitude. That's that's one good thing. And sometimes you just sometimes you got to walk in life like it's just you. Hmm. You can't worry about nobody else's opinions. Right. You just gotta have your. Hard. You gotta have your head up, and you're like, you know what? Psh, that, that's hard. That, that walk, like you know, you know that walk. When people are like, oh, she thinks she the shit. Yes, cause I am. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the walk, this is off topic. But why in the gym? Oh no! <laughs> why in the gym? Every female, every dude got a certain walk. Like they just did the best workout of their life. Like yeah, I'm the. It's like they pop their shoulders and stuff. And the girls, because they know they got these little spandex on, be trying to get these certain walk. Like you know, you don't walk like that in regular. You know, like regular clothes. Right. Stop walking like that. And then the guys be like, yeah, yeah, I'm beating my chest. Yeah, yeah. Like what are you doing? They, they be, I don't know what they be doing, child. <laughs> It's kind of like, wasn't it Kevin Hart that talked about that in one of his stand-ups? Talk about some, yeah, everybody be looking around to see who's watching. Right. And then he didn't even do nothing. He just left. Right. He made all that noise for no reason. But yeah, don't don't be that don't be that person. I'm trying to be extra for no Don't do that. Mm-mm. Stay on track. Figure out what it is that you want, not what somebody else wants for you. Because sometimes parents will put their um, goals and dreams on their kids. Mm-hmm. And like Keita says, she's not trying to do that. She's trying to allow her son to figure out what it is that he wants and she will be there to support. You need those kind of people around you. Period. Period. I was <laughs> <laughs> like, how you do the T? Period. <laughs> be better. When you know better, you do better. You do better, baby. Okay. My brother said, when you see better, you do better. Mm, and something something else. I was like, hmm. That's a good one. Okay, bro. I see you. When you see better, you do better. I see. Come on. <laughs> so you better come with it. Right. And I was in the car and I was over a little, uh, what's that little um, voice? And I was like, come through a little bro. All right. Sure. Right. Because I had to slap myself. You, yep. Mm-hmm. You are crazy. Yeah, so look, if we can do one thing, talk good to yourself. That is true. Because I know sometimes I fall off and I get negative and I just and I get mad because I know what type of person I am and I allow other people's attitudes and stuff to kind of come on to me and now I act like that and it's not cool. Ooh. Especially in like in the work environment. Somebody always negative. Somebody always got a problem. Somebody always this. I've been that person. Mm. I don't want to be that person. But the thing is, it's like when I'm pissed off about something, it stems from something that somebody did to me. Mm -hmm. So I want to try to get down to the nitty gritty of it so I can fix it so I can move forward because I have to continue to work with you. Right. So we need to fix whatever that issue is. Right. So that I can move forward. See, some people can just throw it under the rug and keep it moving. Be fake. I'm not a fake person. I need to hash out all my issues first and then I'm going to be good. I just don't like being around people that I got problems with. Okay. But anyway, like I said. Talk good to yourself. 
when you got negative people at your job that's you know send you instant messages and all them little you know let me go get stuff. my shade sunny <laughs> yeah girl girl don't fall into the negative talk don't, don't fall, fall into the, the work the, god look, look, says don't, fall. don't do you it fall, you fell for the banana tailpipe <laughs> don't do it to yourself don't do it to yourself Child. Do better. I'm trying to tell you. Be better. Challenge yourself. Go against what people said you can't. And I, I go I, hard. I really think that's why we be that's why we be driving so hard for the podcast. Yes, because it's like, and we notice because it's like you didn't think we was gonna do it. Go ahead, talk about it. I ain't scared. You, you, you didn't think we were gonna do it. Who? I'm just saying anybody. No, I'm just saying who. Oh. The, pe- the people closest to you, right? right. You didn't think exactly. it was gonna ha- we, was, we weren't going to do it. <laughs> you didn't think, you know, whatever you thought. My thing is... You still think we got one episode. Bitch, we on 48. Right. That's how much you don't pay you attention know, to the post that we me, post oh, and you follow. You know, every time okay, somebody asks me, how's the podcast going? I don't know. Did you listen? <laughs> that's, that's my, that is my response every time. Did you listen? Um, You follow us on uh, Instagram. Right. Oh, did you mute us? Oh, hmm. I think it's you crazy. Muted us. And That's and fine. and honestly, honestly, like I'm gonna be so I'm gonna be so honest. Like last month, right? This is our podcast. Month, last month, I went on my Instagram because I was trying to clean up my my page because I had too many pictures, too many posts, and I had to get rid of stuff that didn't really make sense. Because I told you, I'm I'm trying to go through this whole. I'm trying to get my myself together. So Come I started on going on my Instagram and I'm I'm deleting memes, I'm deleting pics, and I started getting to people's stuff that I posted on my page, and I'm like, <laughs> "Dog, I ain't ever seen them post none of my stuff on their page. Not an episode, Come on now. not a not a nothing. Okay, you ain't like it, not mm-hmm. even right, not even a like. So I started deleting that stuff. Yeah, I oh, mean, I'm dele- like like no. You can't, don't, don't send me no inbox. Don't send me no DM. <laughs> don't send me no instant message, no text message asking me to, to post your stuff on your page, to, to repost your stuff on, on my page. If you ain't did nothing like that for me, because I'm quick to go on somebody's page and screenshot their stuff mm-hmm. and post it on my page. Yeah. Because, because that's what a real friend other do. Stuff. You don't have to uh, ask yeah. me to do it. I'm just going to do it. But, Unless I be like, yo, Kita, yo, you saw my post. Go, go say something real quick. I did that one time. I did. But if you can't show me that same thing, like old mm. boy off the baby boy, it's 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 the it's the bread and butter, baby. It's the, <laughs> it's the butter. <laughs> you know, I do something for you, you do something for me. Point and blame. It's not it's not always like that, but it shows appreciation. Hmm. If I post your book on my Instagram. And you can't post my podcast on your Instagram. Not my, but my. What is the, like, don't do that. Don't look for me to do something and you can't show that same stuff in return. Because like I said, I do stuff because that's what I want to do. Hello. But I'm not going to keep supporting somebody who ain't supporting me. Can't even, you can't leave a review. Uh, You can't even say, you can't even hit me up and be like, hey, I heard that podcast. I think y'all should, you know, maybe y'all should do this. I'm here for that. You know, I'm here for the criticism. Come on now. Good and bad. I don't care. Positive, bad, whatever. I'm here for it. Because who, how how do we know if we're not doing something right if you don't tell, if, if, you, if nobody tells us? Or how about the ones that did it and are doing it well and can't even give pointers? Oh, that's hmm? shit. That's, that's black people all day. I mean. That's the get... other part that holds us back. Holding right. on to knowledge and not trying to share. Right. That's exactly why. Most of us are in the same position because people are not trying to help. You have all the knowledge and you have all the followers. You won. Right. Why can't somebody people else be, who's not even in the same sector? People be this acting the like they Diddy, Nas, and Jay-Z around here. But look, you we're not even competing with you because we're in a whole different thing. You're doing food or health or whatever, and I'm over here trying to do model or whatever. I don't know. What up? Right. It's not even the same line. What right. you think? I'm going to steal your people? No. Right. They still going to come to you. Exactly. So it's like, again, that is exactly why... We as a people can't move forward because of us. That's it. That's what it is. It's that. We're always going to be crabs in a barrel. Why should we have to ask for support? I thought that was just automatic. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do appreciate those that do support. Uh, Yeah. 
And the ones that do support, I have no idea who they are. I'm here for it, though. You, know, you, you see what I'm saying? I don't know who they are. They're mm-hmm. ghosts to me. <laughs> I don't. I, I can't put a face to the name. I can't put a name to the face. I don't know who they are. But the people that's closest to you or you feel like your friends, like, no, let me, let me, let me take that back because I do have friends that do listen. You have friends mm-hmm. that listen. So I'm not going to say we mm-hmm. don't have people that don't listen, don't, that don't support. But there are some that don't mm-hmm. and won't. But it's okay. So but cool. be like, yeah, just buy this, buy that, do this, do that, click this, click that, send this, send that. Right. Come up to my thing. Right. I guarantee if we if we had a live session, right, and we had a super cool DJ and a cool venue, you know what I'm saying? People would be trying to come, right? But it wouldn't be the closest. It wouldn't be those. Mm-mm. No matter how much stuff we put out as far as promotion, it's coming up. It's today. It's today. Mm-hmm. It's in an hour. It's going on now. Come through. You still got time. Mm-hmm. You may see one person you know come through there. All right. Do better, people. Stop being selfish. All right. And it's just God gave us right. twenty four hours in a day. And it's just it. it this doesn't have to anything to do with our podcast. Mm-mm, it has it's to a general do with statement. People as us as a people as a whole, we mm-hmm. are so screwed up. It's sad. It's fairly Why sad. Why do you think Asians, Jews, whites, Hispanics? They all become successful in doing what they got to do for a business, family, family wise. Because guess what? They take turns. They take turns. And okay. They take care of each other. It's your turn. Okay. Everybody pull your money together and give it to so and so. We ain't pulling no money. Nah, girl. I gotta. Mm-mm, I gotta get this hair done, girl. Nah, I gotta get my nails. Nah, mm-mm, I gotta get my car fixed, child. Mm-mm. No, nah, right. me and my family, we going over here, child. Yeah. Like say, like say, if one of us had a successful business, and I say, you know what? Yo, Miss B, I'm going to give you $20,000. Go start your business. All I ask you for is I mm-hmm. need my money back in return. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. We ain't going to do that. No. Because we don't trust us. That's why. That's another thing. Trust. We Look, in order for us to do something for another, we got to see your track record mm-hmm. before. Others, Asian, they don't need to know what you did last time. They're going to take your word for it. Us? Oh, nah. Because they, girl, smart. I... they know if, if, if an Asian... If 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 I were if I were Asian and my grand and my father said I'm going to give you fifty thousand dollars to start a business or oh, however much money he say, he know where the market is, black community. Mm-hmm. What I got to do? Nail shop, cleaners, mm-hmm. chicken spot, seafood, whatever. Come on, Chinese food, cleaners, wherever I need to go. And guess what? I'm gonna get that money back, mm-hmm. and I could get him his money back, and then the money I made for my business, I can I can. I can give to another family member for them to start their business. Hello. Because he's going to make that back probably triple. Four. Right. Right. Us. <laughs> I can't even. No. Oh, man. No. And you know, I'm pretty sure all these other um, ethnic groups look at us and laugh. Of course. Because they, for one, they know how powerful we are as, as a whole. For mm. one. Black people are some of the most powerful people as a whole, especially when it comes to money. <laughs> but we, but yet we're spending our money outside of our own community, and not doing and and, and making everybody else rich besides ourselves. Now I hmm. will give people credit because they're trying to do better now. Killer Mike, you know he's he he. I think he bought like apartment buildings a block down Atlanta and doing some other stuff. And some other people are doing the same thing. So they're trying Queen to Latifah. you know buy buy up these neighborhoods, buy up these you know these houses. Your twin Queen Latifah in Newark, New yeah, Jersey. Yeah, she's about to start her fourteen back. million dollar, you know, Newark housing, mm-hmm. whatever thing that is. So they're starting to get on board. Damn, because gentrification is is happening and has happened in New York City, right. especially Brooklyn. Hell, Marcy Projects and all of that. There is no hood. There is no project no more. It's straight white. Right. Okay, that's what it is. Right. And all them families have been pushed out. Right. And not saying, can't afford it. And not saying. That these rappers and these, you know, music moguls, they can go and buy out the hood and they just stay the hood. No, they can go buy the hood, revamp it, mm-hmm. and place these black families into better housing. You know why it's hood? Do you know why it's a project? Because it's ran, what, ran down. Not even that. It's just the people don't have resources. Right. 
That's why. That's why there's crime. That's exactly why there's crime. Mm-hmm. There's no resource. So people are out here trying to figure out how they can get it and go. Right. And big up to they set and, us. And they look, set us up. Right. And big up to Jaden Smith for getting that that water filtration oh, yeah. to Flint. That's what's up. Like, he wasn't playing with that. You the youngest out of all of them. <laughs> yep. And you making it happen with mm-hmm. mobile filtration. Hmm. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. But then it's like they set us up. What was the movie? With um. Oh gosh. Oh my goodness. Ricky. Boys in the hood. Yes. What was um. Ricky's friend's father's name. Um. Lawrence Fishburne. There you go. Mm-hmm. Remember when he was educating them? Mm-hmm. Why do you think there's a, a a liquor store on the corner everywhere in the hood? Mm-hmm. It's a setup. Mm-hmm. You get liquor in your system, what happens? You get crazy. Mm-hmm. Come on now. I mean, the Harlem Renaissance ain't go down just because we were fighting hmm. each other. Girl. No. Because we had ideas. They knew what was coming. You got to separate the people. You- Man, that's a whole... That's a whole message right there. Child, I'm trying to tell you. That's a whole message. Drop mic on that, Jay. No, I don't drop the mic. I don't want to hear no loud. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, this is episode 48 with your girls since being keyed up. The 415 Podcast. You want to hop in on this conversation? Hit us up through all the different channels that we have. You can email us. You can DM us. 415pod. Gmail. 415 Pod on Instagram. You can listen to us on all different streams. You got YouTube. You got Spotify. You got TuneIn. You got iTunes. You got Google Play. You just got a lot. <laughs> How about you go out there and just start clicking around and just go ahead and just support. Oh, man. Okay? You don't have to do anything. If you clean it, you put it in your earphones and then you just listen. Right. You ain't got to do much. You don't have to take away from your day. It's just in your ears. Put that flavor in, in your ear. ear. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go. But until next time, you already know. It's your girls. Miss B and Keita. You know it. Peace out. Peace out, yo.